Hey, welcome back. And in this section of the series, we're gonna be doing the early detailing. So basically just setting up the basic scatter systems, kind of adjusting things and just getting things ready to move into the actual full heavy detailing stages. So let's get started with this. All right, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm actually just selecting all of the castle assets. I'm moving that off to the side and then I'm hiding that. And I'm just bringing that back in as a collection instance. So collection instances use way less memory and also, as you can see right here, I can actually just select any part of the castle and it kind of just works as one single object. So it's much easier to manipulate, move around and do whatever I need to for the rest of this project, basically. So here I was just moving the camera back and also just kind of getting the foreground a little bit more ready to start scattering all of the like grass and other foreground scatter systems. So I'm just kind of extending the path out because I moved the camera and just cleaning a few things up now. All right, so now what I'm going to be doing here is basically just getting all of the assets that I think I'm going to be scattering. So I may or may not use some of these assets, but if I think I might be using it for this project, I'm just going to import them and bring them out into organized rows just so they're easy to find later on when I need to, you know, grab things and start scattering them. And to do this, I'm actually using an add-on that I'm working on at the moment. So this add-on isn't done at the moment, but I'm only just using this as an asset library. So you can actually find most of these assets on my website if you want to actually use these assets, or you can use any other asset as well from any other source or you know any other add-on that has an asset library too. So basically I'm just organizing these into rows. So later on when I'm scattering, I can just look in here, decide what I wanna scatter, select them and then scatter from there. All right, so now that I got all of those laid out, I can actually move on to working on the scatter systems. So I'm starting with grass right here because I usually just start with the essential systems first and I want to create a vertex group. So from camera view, I just basically selected all of the faces I can see from camera view and I'm just filling that in. And the reason I went into camera view is just because I want to make sure I'm only selecting where I can see in the camera view so that I'm only scattering in the areas that I can see and not outside of that range, just because scatter systems take up a lot of memory and you don't want to just be scattering outside of camera view and wasting memory and making the scene even slower when you don't need to be. So now I'm just kind of editing some of the settings and then kind of just filling in some of those blank spots. All right, so now I'm just moving on to the basic pine trees with pretty much the same process. I'm selecting everything I can see from the camera view, filling in some of those blanks, but I'm still leaving some of those spots empty just because some parts of those are kind of hidden behind hills and little cliffs. So just creating the vertex group about to apply the density and kind of just change some of the scale settings, rotation settings, and elevation minimum just so that it's not going to be underneath the water. This is also my scatter add-on that is actually out at the moment. So you can actually use this if you want to. You can get it on my website or my Patreon as well. Um, as you can see right here, I'm using a distance scaling feature, which actually allows you to scale instances over a distance from the camera that you choose. And this is really helpful because generally the assets are going to get really, really small when they get that far away from the camera in the background. And it's you're going to have to make it way more dense to actually fill in a lot of those blank spots. So generally what I'll do is I'll actually scale the instances just slightly more in the distant areas just to kind of kind of fake the density without having to add even more scattered instances back there and you know just take up even more memory so basically the closer up instances are the correct scale and then they just gradually get bigger and bigger as it gets farther away from the camera and i try not to scale it too much of course because i only want it to be enough to kind of fake the extra density without actually being noticeable that those assets are larger than they should be so definitely don't overdo it on the scaling but if you do it just slightly it can really really help and here I'm just kind of finishing up the scatter settings for the taller trees too, also using the distance scaling. This is a lot less dense of a system. I kind of just like to throw some of these taller trees in there kind of randomly here and there, but not super dense like the smaller pine trees. All right, so now I'm just moving on to the background mountains. And this is using essentially the same process as I have been for the other tree systems. I am making the assets quite large too, as you can see. So pretty much for the same reason, as I mentioned before, um, you know, I just make the assets larger so I don't have to scatter nearly as many instances. And I try to do it in a way that isn't actually noticeable that those assets are very large. Because as you can see right there, when I spawned those assets in the background, they look very, very small. And you have to scatter way more to kind of fill in all of those empty spots if you keep it at that correct scale. So, so generally, I'll just make the assets a little bit larger so I don't have to scatter nearly as many instances back there. 
All right, so before I move on to the rest of the systems, I'm just going to mess with some volumetrics and probably bring in my sky. So the way I'm going to do volumetrics is I actually just bring in a cube and I scale that to be larger than my entire environment. So I just want to fit my entire environment inside of this cube and I can actually just fill this with volumetrics. So in the materials, I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to add a volume scatter node. So here I'm just removing the principal BSDF and I'm bringing in a volume scatter node. So I'm just going to use a very low density and a very high anastropy. So anastropy is just going to be really good for if you want like God rays or like light rays or just really any kind of like golden hour type lighting or sunset type lighting. Here I'm bringing in an image plane with a sky image set to a mission as well. So I'm not going to actually use my HDRI for the sky background. And the reason I'm not using the HDRI for the sky is just because Using an image for the sky gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, you can use a lower resolution sky like 2K, and since it's actually taking up a smaller space, it will actually look higher resolution. And also, you just get more flexibility with the lighting. Like I can choose any HDRI for the lighting that I want, rotate it however I need to get the nice lighting, and then I can choose whatever type of sky I want to look good in the background. And then whenever I move the HDRI, it's not going to actually affect the sky background. And here is my general workflow for just kind of like editing the skies too. So the RGB curves is for contrast, so adjusting the lights and darks. And then the hue and saturation is going to be what I use to adjust the saturation, so make it less saturated or more saturated based on what I need. So now I'm just kind of adjusting the volume scatter, bringing up the density just slightly more to kind of soften the lighting a bit more, but there's not really much in the scene yet, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much volume I need. I'm just kind of using that to soften the lighting a little bit more for now. All right, so now, as you can see on the right side, I have something open called Sun Position, which isn't enabled by default, but it does come with Blender. So you just have to go to the add-ons, type in Sun Position, and you'll have it right there. So what this does is it allows you to actually align a sun lamp, which I just brought in, with an HDRI sun. So it's just super useful. I use this for all of my lighting. What I got to do first is I'm just going to unbind this and then go into the world lighting settings and just switch the HDRIs because I want different lighting. So I got this HDRI from hdrihaven.com. They just have a bunch of free, really high quality HDRIs, which this one is called Lakes. It's one of my favorite ones to use for this type of lighting. It's got a lot of contrast. The colors are great. So um, I'm just setting that up inside of the sun position, just choosing the correct environment texture name. And then I can actually pick the sun in the viewport now. So basically, as you can see, when you click pick sun in viewport, you can actually choose where the sun's at in there. If you hold control and scroll, you can adjust the contrast just like you saw there. And I just picked the sun, and now when I rotate that around, the sun is matched up perfectly with the sun in the HDRI, and you can rotate those together to get whatever type of lighting you need. And at the moment, the lighting isn't perfect, but it is still pretty good. So generally, lighting is kind of something I change throughout the entire process. Generally, what I'm going for for a project like this is I want to usually use some sort of like side lighting. So as you can see here, the lighting is coming from the left side, and the light is just highlighting all of the details on the left while leaving the right side in shadow. So you got like this nice balance between highlights and darks and all those shadows are just kind of outlining around those highlights and just kind of pushing out that detail even more and, and just helping with the depth of your assets. So if I were just to have the lighting coming from like directly behind the camera, everything would be just very flat and even because there just wouldn't really be any shadows it would just all be kind of highlights on top of every single asset. Yeah, so if you want an easy way to get very nice, clean lighting, definitely try out side lighting. It's what I use a lot of times in these types of scenes. It's very helpful and it looks really good. So right here, I'm about to actually import a couple trees just to kind of help frame the image. So this is something that I do for pretty much every render. I just kind of use assets to kind of frame the composition. In this case, I'm using some treetops. And I just think this looks really good. It kind of helps guide your eyes towards the center of the image too, towards the focal point. Um, I'm going to do a bit more framing later on once I get to more of the detailing, but I just kind of felt like I needed to put those there because I was thinking about it at that moment. So now what I'm doing is I'm just selecting my assets and creating scatter systems with all of the assets I think I'm going to be using for the foreground. I have hide upon import turned on, which is a setting that just hides the scatter system upon import. So it just doesn't slow down my system right away. I like doing this just so I can basically go through turn them on one by one and start adjusting them. And it's just much more quick for me. So I already have my grass vertex group created. So I'm just basically going through, selecting all the systems that need that vertex group and applying that just right away. And then now I'm just going through all of my systems and just changing the settings until they look good. So 
as you can see right here, I'm using this pattern setting, which pattern is actually using a noise texture. And this is just affecting the distribution based on the procedural noise texture. And I find this works really well for things like flowers, daisies, and just things where I usually will want some like clusters of those assets. So you can, of course, create like vertex groups and like, you know, weight paint different clusters around, which can look better in a lot of cases, but it's more manual and it takes more time. I like using the pattern effects just because I can use a procedural noise texture and kind of get those randomized clusters much more quickly. You might not have as much control sometimes, but in a lot of cases it works out in your favor. And sometimes you'll need to like, you know, create a vertex group and kind of manually erase certain parts of those clusters. But in most cases it works really good. So these flowers I actually modeled like a few days ago and I was actually pretty excited to use these because I thought they looked pretty good. Um, I'm using the pattern effect for this as well. So if I'm kind of using this pattern effect multiple times on a terrain, I generally try to find a seed in a setting that doesn't create overlap with other clusters as well. So you can see I have the daisies on the right side, kind of close to the camera. With the other clusters, I kind of want to make sure I keep those away from any kind of major other clusters, just because I don't want, you know, the orange flowers growing on top of the daisies, or at least like not too much on top of that. I like to kind of keep them separate. I think that looks much more clean. Now I'm just kind of adding some ferns in. This is just kind of some random distribution. I don't really do too much here. Just kind of some random rotation, some random scaling. And then I just have it on the grass vertex group. And then pretty much the same with the rocks. I just kind of, I add a lot of rocks manually by hand, but generally I'll also use a scatter system with those rocks as well. Just add a few here and there. This I find this works pretty well just to kind of give me a nice starting point with the rocks, but I don't really go too crazy with them just because I usually hand place a lot more of my rocks anyways. So now I'm just selecting the pathway with circle select and I'm going to be creating a vertex group out of this called path. And this is going to be what I use to scatter my path assets like moss and leaves. And also I'm just going to subdivide this as well so I can get cleaner displacement. So you can see it's pretty flat right now and doesn't really look that good. But inside of here, when I start bringing up the displacement and subdividing this more, you can see the displacement on the rocks just kind of pops out a bit more and it's a lot more rounded and more clean. So once I find the value I like, then I just go through and start scattering my path assets. So now I'm just going to bring in some moss and this moss is going to be using a lot of that pattern effect as well, just because I don't want moss scattering like a, just like a, you know, a blanket over the entire path. I want it to be broken up quite a bit. So there's some dirt patches and some moss patches kind of randomly distributed throughout the entire pathway, as you can see. So I'm basically doing the exact same thing with the leaves. But generally with the leaves, I want to have a bit more kind of even distribution. I make the density pretty high just because I like that kind of like orange and green and yellow, but I do want it to cover pretty much more evenly throughout the entire pathway. All right, so I got most of the foreground taken care of with the scatter systems, and now I'm just going to go through and start placing some cliff rocks to cover up a lot of those kind of grassy cliff sculpts that I did. So as I mentioned earlier, I don't really focus on making those sculpts look perfect because I'm just going to be doing what you see here, just hand placing some cliff assets around, which right now I decided to use the Quixel Mega Scan cliffs that I used for the actual floating island. And this is just because I'm already using that rock quite a bit in this render. So that type of rock does fit the type of environment that we're kind of in right now. So I figured I might as well just use that for the rest of the cliffs as well, just because I know that color would fit and that type of rock would fit. So I'm just kind of duplicating these around, kind of just trying to merge them together and make them look like one singular cliff. And I'm just kind of keeping an eye on all of the areas where I have like small cliffs or big cliffs and just duplicating this around and positioning those into place so that they kind of merge with the steep areas, but don't cover up, you know, any of the trees on the top or the bottom really. It can be a little bit repetitive in some cases. So sometimes I'll try to like randomize the like rotation, kind of like use one side and then use the other side. But in most cases, a lot of this is covered up by like trees and background detail. And usually it's just in the distance anyways. So you don't really tell too much that's just one single cliff asset. But if you do start seeing some repetition, do try to, of course, cover up some of that detail. So I just made a cliff right here. So I'm just kind of adjusting the sculpt just to kind of match up with that now because that wasn't there before. I just kind of felt like it'd be kind of cool to have some sort of cliff in the background. So now I'm just kind of fixing the left side. So that's not like this big kind of grassy hill. And then I'm trying out some cliffs in the background too. So kind of similar to what I was doing with the trees and, you know, like adding some framing on the top corner, I'm trying that out with the cliff now. So as you can see, I'm just kind of positioning the cliffs in a way that also kind of frames the top corner of the image. 
And I'm going to try to like put one on top of this and kind of round it a little bit more towards the center if I can. So same thing on the left, trying this as well. I just really like the kind of look of these big cliffs too. If you've looked at a lot of my past renders, there's a lot of times where I have the mountains that have these big cliffs kind of just extending out of the camera view and just kind of acting as a framing like this. I just think it looks really cool, especially like the ones that are faded kind of like, as you can see from the volumetrics in the background, that's just like one of my favorite looks. So now I'm just trying it out in the background with the mountains as well, just kind of placing some cliffs around and seeing if this looks good too. So at this portion, this is pretty much the end of the early detailing as well. So that's going to wrap it up for this section. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you guys haven't already, make sure to subscribe to NVIDIA Studios YouTube channel so you guys can stay tuned for their next videos. The next video in this series is going to cover the more kind of final detailing and like heavier detailing stage. So hand placing assets, um, spending more time just making individual things look good. So I'll see you guys there.